steam locomotives are giant beasts of power and strength. They are considered to be the most living thing that has been made by man. Steam locomotives were once the solution from travelling around from one place to another. These engines would pull both passengers and goods. But times have changed, as diesel engines replaced steam engines in an act which was called the Modernization Plan. But the engines of Sodor, even if they are considered old, still do the same jobs. Now, the engine you can see here is a tank engine named Thomas. Thomas is known as a tank engine. A tank engine is a locomotive with side tanks and a bunker. These hold water and coal for the engines to work. All locomotives are classified into classes. Thomas here is an LBSC E2 tank engine. And you're probably thinking, what does that even mean? Well, let's break it down. The LBSC is the company that built them. The E2 is his class, and he is obviously a tank engine. Other engines, such as E1s and E3s, are part of Thomas's series, but they're different to Thomas's class, almost like the modern mobile phones. For example, an iPhone 6 is made by Apple, its class would be an iPhone 6, and its type is a phone. Now with that basic information about steam locos, let's look at Thomas and his main components and see what everything is. This is Thomas's driving wheels. These wheels are powered by two cylinders that the steam goes into, but we'll talk about that a little later on. The rods that are on Thomas's wheels are known as connector rods or coupling rods. These rods move the other wheels as only one set of the driving wheels are powered by the cylinders. Let's go over here. This is Thomas's cab. The cab is where the crew of the engine are situated and attend to Thomas's movements. Over here you have the regulator, where the driver controls how much steam gets put into the cylinders. This device here is the reverser. When it's turned, it changes the direction of the locomotive. This is the brake, but we'll get to that a little later. This is the water gauge. This tells the crew how much water needs to be added into the boiler. If water doesn't get into the boiler, the PSI can rise and explode the whole boiler, which can be tragic. So, that was the cap. Over here is the boiler. This is where all the steam is made and where some of the water is stored. On Thomas's boiler is a dome. The dome is where the regulator handle meets the boiler. There is a valve underneath the dome that allows the steam to pass through to the cylinders. In front of the dome is the funnel, where the excess steam and smoke from the firebox is released. Where is he? After his overhaul and everything, he is still late. Where were you, Henry? Steaming problems again? I had a small problem with... You're too fat. You need exercise. Ugh. The thing that just made a noise is Henry's whistle. The steam pressure in the boiler can also be directed to the whistle. The whistle lets off a soundful toot to signal different meanings. These signals are almost like Morse code to tell other crew, signalmen and station masters what is happening to the locomotive. In front of Henry's whistle here is what's called a safety valve. When pressure in the boiler is really high, the safety valve releases this steam to bring the pressure down. This stops boiler explosions. Henry is a lot different than Thomas. He is an LMS Stania Class 5, which are also nicknamed Black Fives. Henry is also a tender engine. A tender engine is a lot different than a tank engine. Tenders are an extra wagon at the back of the locomotive that holds water and coal. These tenders were designed for engines who need to go on long journeys. 
This is why tender engines are a lot larger and bigger than tank engines are. Henry is coming to a stop at Crosby. To stop, Henry uses these brakes, just like a car. The brake blocks come down slowly onto the wheel and bring the train to a stop. They're usually made out of metal, but in the early days of steam, they used to use wood. <laughs> I'm so glad my brakes are made of metal. Ow! Oh, Henry, shut up! James doesn't like when we refer to the incident. No! Oh dear! Oh dear! My brake blocks are on fire! My brake blocks are on fire! They're made of wood! <coughs> uh, uh, anyway, our journey with Henry has come to an end. Now here comes Duck. Duck is a Great Western Railway Pannier tank engine. He's going to be our example of what a steam locomotive looks like inside. With the power of video editing, we can see what Duck looks like. Now, this is what a steam engine looks like. So let's get down to business. Over here is the bunker. The coal gets shoveled from the bunker into the firebox. The firebox burns the coal and the heat from the coal is transported through the boiler via tubes. These tubes then lead to the smoke box. The heat from the tubes go into the boiler, which is filled with water. This then turns into steam, like a kettle. The steam builds up in the boiler and it gets pressurized. This pressurized steam leads to a valve in the dome. When the regulator is open, steam can go through the pipe into a special chamber above the cylinder. This is called a spool valve. The steam goes through this spool valve and pushes the piston. In turn, with a special bunch of linkages, turns it the other direction. This makes the wheel go round and around. The excess steam from the cylinders goes into a pipe that leads to the smoke box that releases the steam from the pistons and excess smoke from a firebox. This then shoots out of the funnel into the air, which causes the famous chuff noise. Duck cylinders are internal and can't be seen from the exterior, but there are some engines with external cylinder blocks, like Gordon here. EXPRESS COMING THROUGH! Gordon has external cylinders, as you can see here. The rods are all external and look more complicated than the internal cylinder blocks. Here is a small diagram of the rods. This rod here is very special. It's what controls the direction of the locomotive. In one direction, it can go forwards. In another direction, it will go backwards. This is the rod that the spool valve is connected to. This is the side rod which is connected to all the wheels, which makes them go round and round. And this one is the main piston rod, which is where the steam from the cylinder hits the piston. And that fully covers how steam locomotives work. Steam has stolen people's hearts for many years now, and their magic lives on to this day. Thanks to Heritage Society's Keeping Steam Alive, we can see these living beasts and how they used to work. I now hope you have a greater understanding of these massive machines and how they operate with our friend Thomas.